Oh, shoot, Dan, it's time for the copy corner. No, hey, Terry, we better film our video today. <laughs> yeah, man, what's going on? How you doing? Good, good. How's today treating you, Terry? Today is treating me great. It's my favorite part of the day when I get to talk to you and to everybody else out there for doing another episode of the Copy Corner. And this is our little corner of the internet where we, we start talking about different copywriting tips, freelance tips, things that can help you write better and grow a business that you love. And today is a great topic, Dan, that I'll let you start off with. Yeah, sure thing. So today we're talking about how to write for top publications. You know, as freelance yeah. writers, this is a question that Terry and I get a lot. Um, so we wanted to kind of cover that, go into the benefits of guest blogging and why you should do it. Right? Yeah, absolutely. And we get this question a lot from writers that they're just starting out or they have written articles before, but they want to keep getting their name out there and get higher paying clients. And one way to build up that portfolio and reputation is to guest post. And there's a lot of publications out there, you know, that are, that are looking for articles, that are looking for help. You know, I've had some success doing this. You've had a lot of success. You know, you were telling me a story about how you got in Entrepreneur Magazine even when you weren't a writer, which was which is great. And it's also proof that you can do this. Right. I think, you know, most important thing is the publication just wants a great story that's going to resonate with their readers. So if you have an idea and they haven't done it yet and you can pitch that to them, they're going to be all about it. Yeah. So Dan, go through your you know, best formula for how to approach this for the writers out there who are interested in guest posting. Yeah, absolutely. So I think one of the biggest mistakes people make is they pitch the wrong people, like right off the bat, you know, they have this awesome article idea, they want to get it an entrepreneur or founder or Forbes or wherever it is. Um, but they just don't know who to contact to, you know, send that pitch to. So I think, you know, step one is, you know, whatever publication that is you want to write for, come up with a topic and a story idea that you think is going to really, you know, connect with their readers. And then first, you know, do some research on their website, make sure that hasn't been covered yet. Cause a lot of times, you know, these, right. Yeah. These big publications have already written it. So, yeah. um, if you've got a killer idea, then you need to kind of do some digging and research on their website. Um, or if you can't find contact info there, go to LinkedIn, but you want to find the contributing editor. That's typically the person that kind of fields all those guest post inquiries and decides what does and doesn't get published. So find that contributing editor, get their email address and send them your pitch to see if it's going to be a good fit. I love that. And one thing that I did too was I found, I could not find a contributing editor right away for a site, but I was seeing the, the author, author and mm -hmm. I could go on Twitter and find them and like email cool. them, like find their contact information and they can lead you the right way as well. Again, a lot of content writers, a lot of us wanna help each other out as well. So don't be afraid to reach out to them to try to get that right contact, especially if they already have you know, that reputation and that relationship too. Right, absolutely, Terry. Yeah, and playing off that, I think it's important if, even if you're not actively pitching or looking to guest publish, um, connect with editors on LinkedIn for publications that you do read and you do want to eventually contribute to. Because if you can follow their stuff, like, comment, message, you know, and get really familiar to them, that's going to yeah. be a really helpful in kind of getting your message accepted when the time comes that you do have something to offer. Yeah, I love that. Dan, can you quickly go into your pitch email? So when you, once you find that email address and that contact information, then what is that next step? How do you approach this? Yeah, definitely. And I think if people want some pretty specific info on this, we can, you know, have them reach out and we can kind of send them some right, ideas absolutely. and some templates. But um, yeah, essentially the biggest thing is short and sweet, right? These editors, I guess, you know, at least at the larger you get with the publication, they get sometimes hundreds of guest pitches a day. So you want to make sure that you're really short to the point, um, pitch the story idea, tell them why you're the one to write it, and then let them make the decision from there. Yeah, I love that. Short and sweet definitely helps with emails like this. And, you know, I've even seen people do it where they already have the article written. So if you've done your research and let's say maybe you've done a guest post before, you know, go at it with confidence and be like, hey, this my name is Terry Schilling. I've written this article post about blank that I think would be a perfect fit for you. Let me know what you think. Here's some more information on me as my writer or as a writer. You can look at my website. That's it. Say, I look forward to hearing from you. Best, Terry. That's it. Right. You know, so you don't even be afraid to write your article first 
and send that out to a few other publications and see who gets it first. That's true, right? Good point. I mean, if they don't want it, somebody else likely will. So don't throw that away if you put in the effort to write the piece. Yeah. And I know a big question, Dan, people get is guest posting, but I won't get paid for it or I won't get paid much. And what would you say to somebody who tells you that? Yeah, so I think it depends. The bigger guys, right, definitely are not going to pay you because they're, in their opinion, the exposures, um, the trade off, which I totally get that. I think yeah. that every writer should have at least a few big logos in their portfolio because it's going to build instant credibility with that next client. They're clicking on your website and they go, oh, wow, they've written for you know, Wall Street Journal, New York Times or whatever, they automatically know you're a good writer because you've had work published there. So if it's good enough for them, it's going to be good enough for um, what they need from you. So I think it's worth the trade off to have that awesome portfolio builder. What do you think, Terry? Yeah, I'm, I'm with you. You know, I think it's great to have those logos on there and build social proof. And just look at this as a catalyst to build your own business. So if you have a website, you're bringing traffic to your site. Maybe you're getting more email list. Maybe you have other exclusive articles and products, you know, free downloads, things that you pay for. And you can do that. And plus, a lot of people make advertising dollars on their website. You know, the more articles, the more right. eyes you get to you, the more, the more, you know, ad spend that you can have and have that passive income. You know, blogging is definitely a lucrative business if you're consistent with it. And a big start of that is, you know, doing all these guest posting. So I think it's very beneficial. And that's why we wanted to talk about it today, uh, because we think it can be super helpful for you guys, you know, if you take the right approach. Right. I think every writer should have this as a tool in their arsenal, right? Whether you do it all the time or not, if you at least um, have a little bit of experience doing it to kind of have that portfolio builder. But yeah. Um, Highly recommend for sure. Yeah, I mean, if you get in Forbes or Entrepreneur Magazine, you know, think about you know how you're going to feel after that, seeing your name under by you know Terry Schilling, by Dan Marzullo. It's a great feeling. It's definitely motivating to keep writing and doing more. And again, it builds so much social proof. And there's a lot of other people out there who are really good at this, and we wanted to give them a shout out. Dan and I were talking before. You know, Aaron Orndorf is a great one. I've read his stuff on Copy Hackers and heard about how he, uh, you know, makes a ton of money from guest posting. It was really his catalyst. Um, J Jacob McMillan is another one, really smart with SEO and content strategy. You know, reach out to him for a lot of information, um, you know, on guest posting. And Dan, do you got anybody else? Yeah, I would say, you know, Terry, me and you were kind of joking about this earlier today is, is Kaylee Moore. I, I, she is everywhere. Every time I read something yeah. on the Internet, Google something, there's an article written by her on it. So she's got a ton of exposure through guest posting. Yeah, she does a great job and she has a lot of great resources on her site and her email list is awesome, too. So, yeah, check mm -hmm. out those three people. Those are great resources for you guys. And Dan, that's it for today. On, you know how to guest post even when you think you're a nobody you can have success with it so take right. this tips you know tailor it to to your strategy and best of luck to you i think it will work out for you right yeah and i think terry before we sign off here we've got some exciting news that we <laughs> wanted to share with the viewers yes. um yeah so yeah you, definitely you want to tell them about this uh cool new podcast that's coming out <laughs> yeah Absolutely. And thank you to everybody who have been watching and supporting us and even asking. I really love what you guys do with the Copy Corner podcast. And it's not technically a podcast. It's a video series. We wanted to start out with video, but more of you are asking if there's a podcast version. So we are working on that right now. It will be out soon. So stay tuned for that. And of course, follow the Copy Corner hashtag. That way you can get you know notifications when the new videos are out. And of course, then when we announce that we're launching the podcast. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. Love what you do. Proceed with passion. We'll see you on the next episode of The Copy Corner.